So um, I think we can start now to save time for all of you. Uh, so hi everyone. Uh, thank you for your time to join the webinar today. Next.js Supercharged uh, Web Performance organized by Wiseline Academy and Go to School. Um, let me introduce quickly about myself. I'm Ngoc Nguyen, I'm Academy Program Manager from Wiseline Vietnam. Uh, for those who haven't heard about Wiseline and Wiseline Academy, let me do a quick introduction before we enter the main content of our event today. So talking about Wiseline, we are the software development and design services company with operations around the world. We have in the US, Mexico, Vietnam, Australia, Thailand, and Spain with six years of experience and more than 1,000 employees worldwide. We started as a product company and gradually we migrated to a services company. We realized that we could have other high growth companies to build better product. Through our different disciplines, we can mention like a technical writer, um, UX designer, project management, and on other engineering disciplines like site reliability, uh, QA, AI, and also mobile. In the screen right now, you can see some of our clients around the world. And we, Wiseline, is the trusted ally of brands such as National Geographic, Fox Network, the Washington Post. As a part of our culture, Wiseline empowers employees and the community to innovate and grow their career. This is the reason why Wiseline Academy was created. Westlight Academy is a platform that we offer free education programs such as workshop, talk, and certification in today in today most high value skill in the technology such as AI, techno, um, technical writer, software development. So you can follow us from other social media like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or linking to keep updated about upcoming courses we offer. As a part of our commitment to the community, we love to host aware some people who enjoy contributing to the community. And today with the topic of Next.js Superchat Web Performance, we happy to welcome our speaker, Jack Lee's CEO and co-founder from Goto School. And on the other side, we have Alex from senior, we have Alex, senior engineer from Westlife. So right now I will pass the control to our speakers. Yeah. I, I, it's <laughs> okay, thank you. Sorry, that was a long introduction. That was, thank, you. thank you, Luis, for telling me I was muted. Uh, I was just saying, I'm really excited about Next.js. We've been teaching a lot of web development at Coder School, uh, particularly with React. But Next.js makes it really easy to build kind of full stack applications. And you'll see a lot of really cool features today uh, with an introduction from Alex and then some demo afterwards from me. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Alejandro Trejo Huerta. You can call me Alex for short. <laughs> I'm a software engineer at Wiseline. I have nine years of experience, and four of those uh, I have been at Wiseline. And two of those years, four years, I have been working at the Vietnam office. So please, as a side note, identify yourself in Zoom uh, using your name and last name please mute your microphone along the course. Uh, if you have some, some questions, 
please write it on the chat and focus your questions on the present topic and please turn off your camera. So the agenda for this first part of the talk is going to be the following. Uh, I'm gonna give a, a quick background background or background. We're going to briefly talk about the evolution of the high level architectures for a web app to see where more or less where Next.js fits. And uh, we're going to introduce what is Next.js, uh, some of the key features of Next.js and we go, we go and finally, well, why, is going, why is a good idea to use Next.js? After that, uh, Charles is gonna take over the talk and give a quick demo. Okay, so without further ado, let's start with the background. Okay. So on the early years of the internet, the first web applications that we saw use a high level architecture uh, as the one that we show in the in this slide, uh, the we have a backend server that processes the information take, taken from the storage and return the full HTML file to the client. In this case, for every major user interaction, such as sending a form, changing the page, or even requesting more information that the application needed, the the application will have to return to the server to get the updated HTML. For every major uh, and JavaScript in this in this kind was mainly used to create small user interactions such as animation, color changing, hiding elements, uh, etc. The main the main problem that we got with this approach was that for for the user it's a bad experience to wait to see something on the page. Even moving through routes in the application needed a full loading of the content for that route. Examples of this kind of applications, we have PHP, ASP.NET, JSP, and Ruby on Rails. There are more, but this is, uh, these are the, the more, most knowledgeable. After that, with the rise of the usage of JavaScript to improve the experience of web applications, uh, such as using jQuery to manipulate elements in the page, I just request to fetch data from a server or and pages request to be able to switch asynchronously through routes. Developers start creating frameworks to help them develop, develop applications easier and faster and they started to use an architecture similar to this one, where rather than having the backend generating the full HTML needed, now this was delegated to, to the JavaScript part. The HTML, JavaScript, CSS, and related assets were hosted separately from the backend in another server or services, normally a, a CDN. All the needed JavaScript have to be bundled in a single or multiple files and the backend now just expose a REST API that it will consume by the application. Downsides of this approach is that the user don't see the information immediately after the page finish loading. The process to build your JavaScript can be painful to deal with because you have to do a lot of configurations and deal with task managers. Technique, uh, to add to this, techniques to remove unused uh, or redundant code were developed by the JavaScript community. And also certain types of applications that need a good SEO score cannot fully benefit of this approach. Moving on later on, when React, okay, sorry. Examples of these kind of applications, we have 
Ember GS and Backbone GS in the early age, and now more recently, the three predominant are Angular, React, and Vue GS. Later on, when React appeared to the single page application scene, uh, it offered a render to string function that returned the generated HTML. And with this and the rising popularity of JavaScript for the server, you see Node.js, developers were inspired to, to get back again to server-side rendering. Uh, this time, a uh, web app server was put in between the backend server and client browser. So the client only interacts with the web app server. <clears throat> uh, this web app server generates the HTML and sends it to the client. A JavaScript bundle is still needed for further interactions in the app after, after loaded from the server. And this also helped improves the SEO score since the HTML return has the data related to the access route rather than just an element where the app will be mounted. Uh, this also leads to better performance. Some routes can be catched and improve load times. And also you can split your JavaScript needed Downsides of this approach is that it's really hard to make it work. Everything sounds beautiful, but it's really hard to make it work since you have to deal with a lot of configuration and or boilerplate code had to be done in the server side part. And also early implementations of the render to stream function have used to have performance issues and so examples of this, of this, we can see the movement that was rising at that moment that was universal JavaScript using Node.js and React. And with this, we can see more or less see where React sits, where Next.js 6 sits. And, but let's have a quick recap of those. And we see, we just see the, the high level architectures for the, serv the first server side rendering part, the single page applications, and now a, a kind of a hybrid of server side rendering with single page application. So what is actually next yes? First of all, let's review what is needed to, to develop a React application. As mentioned in the in the last in the last high level architecture, we need to develop a, a React app. We need to to bundle the the JavaScript, you need to do production optimizations, such as code splitting. And you also might need to, to, to pre-render some pages to improve your SEO score. And you might need to write some server-side code. And also the, the deployment of the app sometimes can be really painful. So what is actually Next.js? Uh, as taken from the documentation, Next.js can be defined as the React framework. I mean, the React framework. And this is because it helps us to deal with the problems mentioned in the previous slide. And for some projects, it mo mostly eliminates them. How does it do it? Out of the box, Next.js allows us to, I know that we are going to see some of these features in more detail later in the demo. Uh, it, allows you, it allows us to define app routes with just the file system. We can use pre-rendering techniques 
whether with server-side rendering or server-side generation. It has automatic code splitting. The client side is optimized to prefetch information or, and or assets. And the development experience is great. Uh, easy way to define API routes if you need them. And this depending on the service that you are using to deploy your application can be automatically mapped to a serverless functions. You can easily extend the configuration of Next.js and as previously mentioned, mentioned, it's easy to deploy. So let's review the, the key features. In this part, you might see repeated ones from the previous. So let's just, and as a side note, this, the examples at the, and the full list of the features are from the next year's version 10. There's really, really no, not good reason to go back versions since as for the version 10, the, the features have improved a lot. So it's, it's better to stick with the newest version. So first of all, we have create next app, fast refresh. We can use TypeScript. The page system is really good. Uh, we can do easily data fetching. It has built-in CSS support, image optimization, um, it's repeated, fast refresh, but API routes. So let's go one by one. And if you are familiar with create with React, you might be familiar with create React app. So similarly, Next.js has a create next app command line tool to bootstrap a Next.js application. You simply use the command npx create next app and the tool will guide you to create the app. After installing the dependencies by just running, you just run the dev command with whether npm or yarn and the application will start and you can go to your local host and start seeing. Also the, the tool add build and start scripts to test your production production builds. As previously mentioned, you can just edit a, a component or something in your application and you will see the, the result immediately. If you want to use TypeScript, you just add a configuration file and run the app again. And next we'll guide you through the setup to, to finish setting the TypeScript config and you can use it. Next we have the page system is really nice. And you just declare a React component. Each React, each page is a React component and is associated with a root based on its file name. So in the in the folder pages, you can add all your pages that you need, and it, the those will be accessed in the root. So for example, for this one, the about, you have the page slash about.js file, and you can access it by slash about. You can declare dynamic roots by naming your file with a param name inside, inside brackets. So in this example, this page will be accessible by post slash one, post slash two, and so on. In the code, we see that we can get the parameter using the use router hook provided by Next.js. And more details about that. For example, we, we have this post slash ABC and we will have the following query object. 
and you can also you can also add query params to the root and those will be mapped as well in the same query object so in that example you see that foo the the query param foo it's also part of the query object and there will be cases that you need to get nest rule roots like this one and in like the one in the first example for that specific case you can use a spread opera operator like syntax to name your root file and by doing it it will catch all the roots given in your query object uh, and in your query object you will see them as an array it's important to note that the name slug is just an example. You can use any example, any name for the root here. It, it doesn't have to be specifically slug. You can also optionally catch all the roots. So if you if you want to to render the the post, just the slash post page in with that same file you can do it by adding another layer of brackets in the name here are some examples of that one as well so. okay so we so far we have covered four of those features queerness app fast refresh typescript and the page system and we still got some some features to cover data fetching built-in CSS support, image optimization, and a static file serving, and API routes. So let's continue with data fetching. So along with the page, with the page components, you can also export special async functions to fetch data and pass it to the page component. Based on, based on your strategy, you can either use get static prop for server site generation, static site generation, sorry, and get server site props for server side rendering. The main difference between those two functions relies mainly in that get static props will run when you are building your app and get server side props will run on every request to that specific group. The choice, the choice to use one or, or the other will vary on the use case of your app. And alongside get static props, you can also export a get static path, paths to let Next know which dynamic routes to generate. So an, a quick example of how the, and we will see in more detail later is this one for get static props, you just return the, the needed props and the and those will be available in the in the main component. Similarly, for get static paths, you return the, the paths that you need to generate. And when the application is building, it's gonna know which pages to generate. So moving on, um, we also have as a feature built-in CSS support. By default, you can add CSS files to the styles folder and import them on your code. Uh, you can easily configure to use a preprocessor such as less or SAS, or if you prefer CS in GS libraries, you can easily configure them. Uh, also, you can simply use an existing existing template from the community with create next app, and I encourage you to to go and check the the available templates, just to know how to set up everything. Moving on, we have image optimization and static file serving. Uh, any file that you add to the public folder will be automatically static served by nets in your code. 
and in your code you can reference it without adding the public section of the path in the in the example we we want to see exactly how and next automatically optimize the image to ship the next the image according to the device uh, the images are optimized as per user request instead of at build time and by default are lazy loaded uh, next has a image component that you can use to to take advantage of those features and if you don't want to use the the static serve option that next provides you can configure next to point to a cdn rather than the built-in public folder so here it's a quick example of the image component. It's really similar to the EMH HTML tag. It's just a wrapper of that, that provides all the, the benefits of it. And here we can see that we are displaying the me.png image, and that will be pointing to the public folder. Okay. Uh, another great feature is the API routes. Uh, similarly to the page root system, any file inside page slash API folder will be treated as, treated as a, an API route without the need to add any more configuration. Uh, if you want to, to support dynamic routes for those as well, you the the exact same rules apply here that we saw, the exact same rules that we saw for the pages apply here. And you can stand the behavior, exporting a config object. Perhaps you, you want to add a middleware or something, and you can also do it. And depending on the, of the service that you are using to deploy your application, this can be automatically converted to serverless functions. And a quick example, we just export the handler here, and that will be a, an API route. You can also try to handle different methods, for example, post, and you can act accordingly. Okay, so so we have covered all the all the key features. These are not all the features that Next.js has. I really encourage you to, to try it and go maybe to the documentation to learn more about it. And first, before moving on, do, is there any question so far? Uh, please, if, if you have any, any questions, please write them on the, on the chat. Okay, so, so let's move on to the why it's a good idea to use Next.js. And the first that I have seen is that you can quickly take advantage of the pre-rendering pre capabilities to improve, you improve the SEO score, the initial page load, and in general, overall, the, the user experience of your web applications. It also, it's a great improvement in the development speed and performance because you are writing just important parts that concerns you of your application and you don't have to write much configuration and the deployments are mainly painless. You, you don't have to deal, since you don't have to deal with a lot of configuration. You can also take advantage of services such as that support the, the jam stack. If you haven't heard of it, I, I really encourage you to, to research about it. It's not part of this talk, but you can take advantage of services that support that stack um, to deploy immediately. And depending on the service that you use, the, the generated pre-render pages will be 
stored in a CDN by default. And also depending on the service, your API routes will be generated as serverless functions by default. So without, with that, the introduction part is finished and I will hand over to Charles for him to, to showcase the, the awesome demo that, that he has prepared. All right. Oh, why is stop sharing? Okay. Um, thank Let you, uh, gracias, Alex. All right. So as Alex said, he showed you all the great features, and now it's my job to hopefully walk you through them, like only an engineer can with code. So let me share my screen one second. Um, and so today I want to build a, a simple uh, application. And hopefully it will be useful and you guys can see how, how this stuff actually works. Let me make sure my screen is right. All right, there we go. Okay, so the first command that you'll need is pretty simple. It's if you've done React applications, this should be uh, simple. It's not create React app, it's called next app. And today, the app I wanted to build was I was browsing the internet, and of course, I came across WiseLine's webpage. Uh, you can find out all about this wonderful company here but they have a simple blog. So I thought this would be a good example of showing you some of the statically generated stuff. So we'll call a WiseLine blog here. So it should just take one second. Um, and while that's loading, I'll fire up Visual Studio Code. So if I go to, uh, and I'll also run the server from Pandom Dev. Okay, so Visual Studio Code, uh, somehow it looks like it didn't load. Why aren't you loading? Quit. Second time worked. All right, so this is the main skeleton that it creates for you. So here at the main page you can look at is under, or all this, most of the content will be under pages. These are individual pages. So index.js, as you can guess, is the main page that loads. Right now, if I open a server and go to localhost 3000, that's the default welcome to next.js page. Let's take this page and edit it just so we know that we're doing something. So I'll just say in here, get rid of all the stuff. And I'll say H1, hello, WiseLine and P friends. Now I have a page. It's super fast. The fast reload that Alex talked about is here. It's actually a very pleasant developer experience, which is important to me. So we have a page that's working and, but let's try to do something more interesting than a static message. So let's try to build some data, fetch some data, and kind of, there was a question in chat about the different types of data fetching. We'll get into that. But first, um, we need to think about some CSS. So uh, by default, um, as Alex mentioned, there's different types of CSS support. So there's CSS modules and such. I won't get into details. All I'll say is we're gonna use uh, Tailwind here, uh, just cause we like Tailwind uh, at Cutter School. So sorry, one second, let me... And the thing is, we'll just install our libraries. So we'll have to npm install and get that command going. And after you install Tailwind, you have to do one quick thing, which you have to configure it. So we'll do it, kicks Tailwind init. And then there's just two more steps. Um, we have to go to app.js and we have to import our Tailwind CSS. It creates a, a global CSS file. And now if we do this, we can access our CSS files for, or our Tailwind styles from any file, including this one. So if I go back to my app, I saw this very basic thing. Let's make the first header section and just see the CSS in action. I just wanted to walk through a simple CSS thing. I won't do much CSS for the rest of it because it takes time and I'm not very good at CSS. So let's look at what the main might look like. Let me just get rid of uh, this H1 here. Also, let me get rid of these styles. You'll see that I'll, I'll use these styles in a second. You can see how they, uh, where they come from. But here we'll just do this and we'll kind of paste this code I wrote before. Um, this is some basic tailwind, but we'll just make some logos. I have set images here. If you are referencing images, you put them in your public directory here. This is where your uh, assets go. So I've copied them before. So let me just actually pull those in.
So if I copy those files, now I can access them uh, like this image source slash public is at the root file. Let me save that and load my page. And I, I have some stuff here. Um, it's not looking exactly correct here. I think I have to restart my server because I installed new libraries. I made a mistake here. So I reload this, I just had to restart the server. All right, so now I have this kind of thing. The styles are a little bit off. So I was browsing the Wiseline, who writes, I don't know who writes the Wiseline webpage, I'm sure it's you guys. They did something a little funny with the REMs. Um, they changed the root file size, a root font size. So let me uh, make that change here. So I mentioned that there's modules. So modules are namespaced. So I can use class names from home.module and nothing will will clash as long as I preference it with styles. But for global styles, there's another file called um, globals.css. No, no, sorry. Yeah, there's global CSS and there's Tailwind CSS. Let me go into global CSS first um, here. These are the styles across all pages. I want to set the font size to 65%. That's what the Wiseline people did on their site. And now I'll change my rems. If I do that, now those styles apply globally, but I want to go into now my home module CSS. And these are just kind of the things that came with the starter kit. But here under logo, I want to change the logo. So I looked on the website and these were the values I had, 15 REMs and 3.4. And remember, these are namespaced. So as long as I'm using, um, well, as long as I'm using styles dot, it doesn't matter if I, call the class name, whatever I like. So now I have here, I have a better looking site. It actually reloads so quickly, I can't show you um, the changes, but I think you remember. So now we've done the first part and we hopefully get an idea of how you would change CSS. You would go into the module CSS, apply what you need. Now for the next part, I wanna build these cards. Uh, I'm not good enough at CSS to build them from scratch while people are watching. So I'm going to use one of the coolest things I like about Tailwind, which is this I call Tail Blocks. This is the free version of Tailwind UI if you're too cheap to pay $250, which I definitely am. So here's a sample. There's a lot of sample things here you can take for your project. Um, I'll take this one here for the blog. And let me just copy the clipboard. So I'll go back to my Visual Studio code and I'll throw it in here after my header. I'll do that. Now, if I paste it directly in, you might try this and you would get some other things. So remember that JSX and HTML are almost the same, but not exactly the same. So I actually need to convert this to uh, JSX to HTML, HTML to JSX I mean. And there's a tool online that helps you with that. So this will do things like it'll change class to class name and it'll also close our image tags for us. So if I do that, now I can paste that new version. And I'll switch back to my application and I have, bam, I have those uh, placeholder blog images there. So hopefully all the front end work is done. You know how to do CSS and you know how to like use tail blocks or templates. But now the real challenge is how do I get these articles here? Okay, so there's a couple ways to get data into a website. Um, I'm sure someone like Wyzen will use like a CMS. So you can use a lot of CMSs like sanity.io. It's uh, my favorite, but contentful. There are a lot of services for this. We'll keep it simple for this site. I won't use a third party service. In fact, I'll just put it in my file system. So we'll make a new folder here called posts. And this is where I'll write the different posts. Let me just create a few dummy posts based on um, some stuff from here. So let's take this one, for example. So I'm gonna just uh, copy the text here. I'll create a new post called, uh, what's it called this? State of Wiseline Academy in 2020.md. It's going to be a markdown file. But one thing I'll do about the markdown files, which is pretty common if you've ever used them, is I'll add some front matter. So some information about uh, the post. So now I have these attributes, which I'll be able to access later. I'll make two posts for now, just because one post would be weird. Um, let me grab uh, a second post here, International Women's Day, why not? So I'll grab this slug here. 
and I'll just write the same stuff basically. Here, I'll actually change the content to be similar to what we have on the website. I don't have all the images and links and stuff, but of course it's marked down so you, you can do that. It's not too challenging. That's when a CMS is actually kind of helpful because you can sort images in different sizes and make it load super fast. So that's an optimization for later. International Women's What's it actually called? It's called, let me get the actual title for fun. Okay, so this is the two posts I have. Now I wanna suck these posts into my index.html or index.js. So right now I've hard coded these things. Let me stop that and let me just refactor this a little bit first. So one of my posts starts here. So I'm gonna take up to here. Now let's refactor that its own component so I can kind of get cleaner code. So it's called blog card for now. And I haven't done any data stuff yet. All I'm doing is I'm pulling this into its own component so I can edit it later. So if I've done this, I'm only making one blog card. So I should only see one. And that is indeed what happens. And now the idea is I'll need to pull in like the data from the file system to actually show like, you know, the articles I've written instead of this hard coded code. So there's one thing I'll need to do is I'll need to install one library, install gray matter. This is what helps parse the markdown so I can pull in the three attributes from the top. And I also need to write some code to understand this markdown or the posts. So I'll make a new folder here called lib. And this is basically my data access stuff. If you had a database, this is where you connect to databases if you're using a more complicated uh, system. But here, since we're using file system, we'll just read from the file system. Um, the first thing to do here is just define the directory we're reading from. So we're going to read from the post directory. And what we're going to do is I'm going to define a new function called get sorted post data. You can call this function whatever you want, but it's like get data or get post data is like kind of a mainstay. So the first part is we'll just read the files. So I'm, I'm pasting code here to save time, but these are all standard Node.js things. Remember Next.js is just like a layer on top of Node.js. So we can do fs.readdeer, pull in all the posts and we'll return them. Um, optionally, since we want to sort them, we can also, can, we can also um, enforce a sort. So we'll, we'll sort them by date. Now, if I go back to index.js, I can import this function I just wrote. And that's how, and then there's the one function that Alex talked about that you implement if you want static site generation. So you have to export a function called get static props. Uh, export async function. And, and next.js will know to call this for you. Here, we're just gonna call the function I just defined. This will get the static props for us. It's uh, get sort of post data. And let's return them. You're supposed to return an object that has a key as props. And if I do this, then all post data becomes a prop for my main component, my default component. So here, I now have access to a prop called all post data. And now I can go through and here, if you've done React, you're very familiar with this pattern, which is a map, uh, a map of props. And I'll just return a blog card for each thing. Um, I'll set props here. So I'll pass the props on to each blog card. I have not read the props in the blog card component yet. If I do this, uh, I get an error. Oh, I forgot to save my lib file probably. So now I'm, I'm seeing two files here, uh, or two blog posts here. Um, they're not set with the title, but I have two instead of one before because I have two articles I wrote. So I'm, on, I'm definitely on the right track. Um, so let's actually pull in the different props. So those are, are tied to this title, date, and category. That's what comes from Gray Matter. So I'll actually pass in the props, title, uh, date, category. Also, everything has an ID attached to it. 
which is the file name in our case. So here on subcategory, I'll say, hey, like title category. And instead of the catalyzer, whatever that is, I'll have the title. The rest of, actually, I'll just delete for a minute because we're not using uh, stuff from that template. So now if I go, I suddenly see the blog post is loading. I haven't defined the images and stuff. Please excuse that. But here now we see like the two articles loading. So this is all statically generated. On When I'm developing, it'll, it'll generate this page every time. It'll use SSR. But when I deploy this, it'll be uh, real, it'll be statically generated. Now, I actually want to read the articles. Remember, I made all that content. So here's the second part of the routing, which is the cool part, which is how we implement that. So first, we'll have to make a link. Um, because this is still an SPA, we have to import a link component. But the way they work in Next is you wrap an A tag and a link tag, meaning this link. You should think about how we're referring to it. So it should be slash posts slash ID. And then you do an A tag and you kind of put everything else inside there. So this link will wrap, I'll wrap just the whole card on it. So you click anywhere here, it'll take you to somewhere. So this URL looks correct. Uh, local Australian post slash International Women's Day 2021 at WiseLine. That's the right art, that's the right URL I want. But we haven't told uh, Next.js how to like load this post. It's not that smart. So we're gonna go and tell it really quick. So this is the coolest part. So here we'll make a new thing called posts. And you can do anything you want here by pages. But for example, let me just quickly say, show you something. Like I can say hello. Yes. So you could just do like this, and that will hard code everything. So the post slash hello. We'll just say hello like this. But we don't want to do like static pages like that. That was the beginning. What we want is something like this. So these brackets denote that ID is a dynamic route. So we can make this will this this will match for both like WiseLine slash sorry let me go back to slash the state of the Wise WiseLine Academy, but also slash post slash International Women's Day. And we just need to pull the information and read that ID parameter and get the right data. So let me just fix up this uh, instead of saying hello. We probably turn something a little bit smarter. So we probably want to return like a title and content. So let's say like title content will be the two props. And here, if I do this, like I need to figure out how it pulls the title and how it pulls the content. So there's two functions that you need to implement here. Get stack paths and get stack props. Get stack props looks just like the other um, in index.js, we, we have the get stacks props. It's, that's what reads the data. But get stacks paths is interesting. That's for all the possible IDs that can have. That's part of the route matching system. So we tell it, hey, these are the routes that match for all these articles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop through all the different articles, save their IDs, and return them here. And in get stack props, I'm going to get all the data about this particular ID for this article and pull that data and display on this page. So I actually need to do one more thing here. Um, I'll install one library called Remark. And that's what's going to parse our markdown into HTML. Once I've done that, I can go back to lib slash post .js and add all the smart stuff. So I can get the sorted post data. But I want to do two things. One, I need to get all the IDs. So I need to make a function called get all the post IDs. And the way I do this, I'm just going to read every file and then like just pull out all the names. So read the directory and then for every all the file names, I'll just pull out like the IDs and I'll replace, I'll get rid of the .md. So the ID for us will be just the name of the file minus the md. I think that makes sense. Also, the other function is like get post data. So given ID, let's get the actual data. And it's very similar. Uh, I just read the file. 
instead of just reading the file, I also need to pull it through like uh, the content. So okay, these first things, three things are the same. We're going to parse that file contents, but then we need to read the remark. And that's where we just use this library that I installed that converts the markdown into HTML that our page can display. So we process it. And then we just return all this stuff back to the content. So return the ID, the HTML content, and whatever, whatever other data we have. So now in ID.js, I'll jump back here. And at the top, we'll import the two files I just, or two functions I just wrote. Post IDs, I think, and get post data. Div slash posts. And for get static paths, and return paths. And we don't want this fallback policy to ignore for now. Um, but that's the option we want. We don't want it to go to the other routes. And then for the actual post data, we'll just grab the post data. Now we'll pull in all the data from the post. It'll run the code we just read, we just wrote. And now let's go back to here. Uh, so I have an ID mismatch here. <laughs> Let me hold on. I think it's I need to do Pram's ID. So to debug in in, in uh, Next.js, we, we still have a wonderful console.log, which will be your friend as you debug. And we can see here. Oh, we're not getting a log here. Okay. Um, I had an object object here. I think it's Prams ID. Sorry, I got lost in here. I need to restart the server. Sorry. I need to import remark. Did I forget to import remark? I forgot to import remark. And report HTML import HTML from Okay, so we, we are loading a page and we don't have any errors yet, but actually what's happening is that we don't have the right content set yet. Let me just see if I can get title running. We need to get a title and all this stuff. Um, so let's look at what our props are here, actually. So we should return post data, actually. So it should be, sorry, so the way I've set this up is it's actually not doing, it's sending props as post data. So I need to actually set this to props data. And here for title, we'll do props data. or possibly just title. I'm now losing the crowd. Uh, let's debug this real quick. So props, post data, post data. Alex, if you want to help me out, feel free. <laughs> if you see something and do something wrong. Um, sorry, I need to. So here we have props, we have ID coming in. Um, why didn't we pass in props data? So get static props should have run. Okay, so it's coming here. So we have this data here, it's called post data. Oh, so I called, what did I say props data? I think typo did, sorry. It should be post data, not props data. So post data. Sorry for the confusion. So what's what's in here is I've returned props. I've nested them under post data. So post data colon post data. It's doing the ES6 thing. Um, I'm reading here. The different uh, things I have are title. I have title, content HTML, 
and date category, all these things. So we can do h1 title, data.date. We want the actual content. And sorry for the bad CSS here. So we'll do div. And there's a dangerously set h dangerously set in your HTML, which will set to um, post data called, called uh, content HTML. Exact syntax for this part. That's right. Okay, so it should be just that. Data dot content HTML. Did we get that right? Content HTML. Okay. Oh, that that HTML. That's this. That's right. I knew there was something that pulls. So you see it's that, that. And now we have the article showing. Sorry for the problems at the end. So let me just walk through that again. So real quick, um, there's two functions that we need to implement on this bracket ID for dynamic routing. One is telling it all the static paths that are possible. So get all the different post IDs. So next JS knows to match this to this particular route. And the second thing is you just need to get the data for this thing. And this runs server side, let's not forget. Um, but at build time, it'll get all the post data and uh, I returned it in the props. The prop is called post data. Post data gets passed here and I have access to title, date, and content HTML. And that's how I build this article, this basic blog post. So I can go here and go there. I get to National Women's Day. I go back and use data bytes on Academy and I have my site working. Now I think I have one more minute and I'm going to do that to show how easy it is to get this deployed online. So you saw that uh, Alex said it's easy to deploy. There's a service called Vercel, which is really nice. So Vercel is the people who made Next.js and it's really, really easy to, um, to do. So let me quickly set up a new repo. Actually, let me just try not go to school. Go to my personal, make a new repo. I'll say, hey, this is going to be Charles Hutchwise line blog demo. Um, we'll make it public and do nothing here, and we'll just initialize it quickly. Okay, so get ready for the commit. Get commit m first blog. So we'll push the main. So this is called wise line. Sorry, what I call it? I called it wise line blog demo. So in Vercel, B E R C L H, I actually see this blog sign blogs demo. I'll hit import. It's super easy. I'll select. Uh, I don't have to change any of these functions, these things, the defaults. And we go out, it's just take about 10 seconds to do. Um, and this is gonna be pushing it to pushing it live. And that's all you have to do. So every time you can set up the CI and stuff, but um, this will do all the optimizations and we have a full website. And that's basically the end of the demo. Oh, there's a whole bunch of questions, okay. Is that way of images? Let me just answer some of the questions. Sorry, I wasn't looking at the chat. Um, is the way of using images works just for next? Actually, there's a whole thing about images too. Um, there's image optimizations you can do at build time. For now, I'm not doing anything special. I'm just using the public directory. In production, you would have some sort of like middleware that does uh, image changing. Yeah, and I get the mm -hmm. confetti and I can visit. And Wiseline blog demo dot first cell app is accessible to everybody. So fast. Um, okay, let's see, other questions. Uh, one of the advantages next 
Yes. The advantage of next is, I mean, I think Alex just described it. It's like, you don't have to set up any of this stuff. Like it all basically automatic, the SSR, static generation, the hydration, all happens, the code splitting, all the features that mm -hmm. Alex talked about. They're very complicated. I could never write them myself, <laughs> <laughs> but Next.js has the same defaults. But, uh, why does Next.js be tied to serverless? Okay. I mean, if you want to answer these questions, you can jump in. So yeah, Jeff, yeah. I think that we, we are moving to the Q&A oh, yeah, session, sorry. right? Okay, yeah, that's what I want to do. Yes. Okay, so thank you for your demo time. So uh, everyone, we will go to the Q&A session. So feel free, feel free, sorry. Um, so feel free to unmute yourself and have the free discussion with our speaker. I think right now we have um, a pending question from Nguyen Nguyen during the time you do your demo challenge. Should I you get stated past if the list of IDs is like infinity, like urban dictionary? So how do you think about this question? He really wants to build urban dictionary. Um, <laughs> Yes, it's fine. Uh, so like uh, for for this, you, you can, it's all build time. So yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not infinite, right? You know, all the different routes that are in your database, uh, all, all the different things. Um, but you can also, can you do, like you need to tell all the different options. I think, I think there's also a way, sorry, I'm not like a super expert. I think there's also a way to do a catch all route like you showed. So I think you um, can do that instead. Maybe you don't have to do get static pass. Mm -hmm. And just to. Uh, off you unmute. So you, you can. Uh, sorry, you're unmute. unmute? Yeah. yeah. One of us needs to unmute. You can unmute and then have the free discussion with oh, awesome. our participants. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, okay, long story short, get side props only runs at build time. So even if there's a lot of them, it's okay. Um, other questions we had, let's see. Um, get stag props is like a special function. That, um, yes, get stag props basically is like, so the, the word static is a key point here, I think. So static means it runs at build time. So get stag means like, go get the information for this thing. And you can you can make it do whatever it wants. Like the props are what you define. Um, so whatever props that you need, you pass to your component. Can you have a static props for each page? You should have get static props for each page. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I'll, I'll, yeah. Alex like already answered that question. Um, is there any technology that's something similar? Uh, I was going to say like Gatsby is pretty similar. Um, but it doesn't have any server side rendering. It's only static pages is the one, but um, that's pros and cons. It also like forces you to use GraphQL. Next year it's a little bit more flexible and can be run for dynamic applications. I would say the other kind of interesting one, which is not really competitor, but what I've been playing around with is uh, something called Blitz. So let me send a link in sjs.com. So it's actually built on top of Next, um, but it's a little bit more opinionated. So it comes with more like data stuff built in. So you have a whole database, you have an ORM. It's, it integrates something called Prisma, which some of you may know. Um, so it's like the fully, the big version of Next.js. And also if you are familiar with, with Vue.js, <laughs> they also have their own, their own version that is Nux, Nux. I don't know how to pronounce it, actually. Nux, Nux. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's definitely the same thing. Yeah, I think that's. I mean, there are like other frameworks for. I mean, there's a million frameworks for full stack stuff in JavaScript, but yeah, Next.js is taking off. I would say it's probably the most popular. I'm sure it's the most popular one now. So it's the way to go for an e-commerce site. I think it's particularly good for e-commerce um, because e-commerce, you definitely kind of want statically rendered pages. 
because you want it to be really fast. Uh, so next, yeah, next year is really good for SEO and like, yeah, fast rendering. So I forget what the statistics are, but like in e-commerce, like every millisecond you lose like some percentage of people. So you can actually see your revenue go down the slower your site gets. So for that next year is quite good. I do think people build a lot of stuff in next year. So there's a whole package. Uh, Sorry, I'm Googling right now for like, uh, for like Shopify integrations and stuff. There's a whole like, uh, here you go. You can go to if, uh, actually let me share my screen. Uh, basic. Yeah, so if you already want, want to see more about Next.js, um, you can, get, I like the showcase in particular. So you can see all these pages made by Next.js and it's really surprising who's using it. So for example, like TikTok or whatever is one that TikTok uses Next.js in production. It's a pretty big site. Uh, where did they go? Okay, I can't find um, them, but like a lot of these like Netflix jobs, I guess that's not that big a deal. Oh, TikTok is here. So yeah, so this is all running Next.js, super fast. See how fast that was. Um, but e-commerce is also a good one here. So you see lots of, oh, Ticketmaster is using Next.js. Yeah. Oh, I can't access it from Vietnam. But realtor.com, I probably can. So yeah, for e-commerce, it's quite popular uh, for stores and stuff. Weed maps. Yes. Oh, Jet. That's right. Jet is using. Jet is using next. Yes. They're not around anymore. So does Next.js have, okay, so two more questions. You wanna handle some questions? I think they're tired of hearing me talk. So Luis has a question. Yeah, I can handle that one. So it says every time we did create new pages, we will need to regenerate all pages again, or can we selectively generate edit created ones? So in that one, get static paths function is gonna help you. You can perhaps tag the, the pages that you already generate and at build time, just keep those pages and, and yeah. And so the next one, next yes, automatically has React inside it. Yeah, if I want to use, use it. Yes, you can, you can use any function. You can import a, any function from React. Mm -hmm. There should be a problem with that. Yeah, the trick there is like how you intelligently, you don't want to, I mean, the pre-rendering makes it load. So if you have certain elements that need dynamic API stuff, you want you don't want to like block on things. But yeah, you just use use state, same as normal. You want to move as much stuff into get stacks props as possible. So I think what I'm trying to say. So you can generate as much as you can in runtime or build time. Easy to use the Redux. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't have any. Yeah, there's actually a, a template in create next app that it's, it's already bootstrapped. So, so yeah, there's no, no problem. problem with adding more. more. Also, you know, you ask a good question, Julian, if you go to the fact and you're like, Bam, it's one of the frequently asked questions. <laughs> the UX, yes. Here's an example. <laughs> example. Here's an example of Splunk. So yeah, you can. Yes, so you definitely need to use the CMS like Strapi or Contentful or I like sanity.io. So yeah, headless CMS is very much a thing you would use. <laughs> I hate downsides using this, yes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> what are some downsides of using next, yes? Uh, hmm. 
<laughs> I guess like, I mean, there must be some. Okay. This is not something we prepared for the presentation. So there must be some cons. Um, yeah, I think I think the biggest one is like, it's not as popular yet. Um, I mean, I think anytime you use a framework, by the way, there is always some tax you pay on understanding the framework and having to learn different pieces. So I think any complexity is always going to be something you should think about carefully. Um, for a lot of applications, like, I mean, you can't, we didn't talk about API routes, but you can also write your whole API in, in Next.js, which I think is, covers a lot of downsides. Yeah. And also, if you already have a WordPress inter integration, it might not be a good case to, to change everything to Next.js. Or... There might be some idea around scale, so I'm not sure. Maybe mm -hmm. I haven't really scaled a huge Next.js application. It is kind of a small, I think the community is actually pretty big now. Next.js is probably the most popular framework. I don't know how many stars they have on the GitHub now. Um, but I don't think the community is very small. It has 65,000 stars on GitHub, so it's getting there. Um, the community hopefully got bigger today because we have <laughs> more people here if we learn about it. And with the newest versions, I think it, it got better because I used like version five. And for the routing, the routing system, it was harder to, to implement it. So they improved the dynamic routes were a pain to, to set it. So they, they have been improving. And that's because the community has, has been increasing a lot over the years. Everyone, do you have any other questions or concerns would like to discuss with our speakers today? Yeah, we have a new question from the chat box. Uh, I mean, to answer your question, uh, Brian, like, I think, yes. I mean, I think, like, it depends on what your alternatives are. So I think Next.js is basically a drop-in for Node.js. It's just a different way to organize your Node.js application. Uh, it's a framework, some utilities. So it kind of depends on your use case and that, like, hey, is Node.js even, or is, like, server-side JavaScript really a viable action, uh, option for you? Sometimes, I mean, I might wonder, like, online payroll, perhaps JavaScript's not the best fit in general. Because if you like, really, it, it, but it depends on a couple of things like what are you using for database, all these things. Um, so it depends. I would think for payroll, you might, I mean, you're probably using a SQL database and sort of stuff there. You're probably not going serverless and stuff. Um, I'm not sure, but it depends. But I think Next.js is like, if you can use Node.js, yes, um, is what I would say. Good job, Claudio. Yes, do it. Uh, Strapi is also great. <laughs> um, yes, you just use the state or hooks, just like a regular React application. Anyway. But I think my statement I was saying is, if possible, you should throw stuff to in static, get static uh, props as much as possible. So you can have dynamic props. So of course, when your component loads, for example, if you want to build like a like button, like I think you mentioned on Urban Dictionary or things like that, those will have to call a different API route. You can't render the button right away, static. So you're going to have to like have that load later. So you would build that component, and that component has some suspense or something that makes it uh, call an API. And you won't be able to render that like count statically. I mean, most likely you can. All right. One minute.
take this away now. Okay. So, okay. So if you don't have any further concern or question, um, I think that we can end our webinar now. We would like to thank again for your time to join and discuss with us about the next JS topic. Um, the, for the upcoming action, we will share with you the recording and the material which uh, we, we used during the presentation today. And we also include the survey form in the email. Kindly like, spend your time to fill in the form and share with us your opinion. Uh, this will help us improve better for our course in the future. And if you have any further concern or question, um, you can connect with Charles and Alex via linking and you guys can discuss further. Thank you. Yeah. Question. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you.